what you'll need to make these. Any kind of hammer. I don't care. You're going to get the proper jewelry hammer. I don't care. Use any kind of hammer in my opinion. Some piece of steel or hard metal. This is a cute little anvil that I grew in my anvil garden and I picked it when it was still small. It wasn't a full grown anvil. But you can get like a, a hinge from the hardware store and nail it to a block of wood. Um, you can find any kind of, you can get a block of steel, anything. You just want some kind of hard metal. Um, this is floral wire floral wire from the dollar store. It's a dollar each. It's it's 12 gauge aluminum and it's coated with pretty colors. So this is going to be the basis of what we're doing. You want some kind of sandpaper or this is a sanding sponge also from the dollar store. Um, this is going to be the hardest to find. This is called a bead reamer. It's basically like a skinny metal spike with sandpapery type stuff on it and it's made for poking in beads and opening them up. If you don't have this, you could use this next item, uh, screw or nail. A nail is better. For some reason, I couldn't find a nail. A screw is fine. Um, this might work too. Oh, we're going to try both. But this, if you definitely have a bead reamer, these are like five bucks at the Walmart craft section. Your regular jewelry tools, some earring hooks that are going to blend in with the color of the wire you pick, and some jump rings that are also going to blend in. These are six millimeter jump rings. You don't want really fat ones because as you're going to see, you need skinny jump rings that are going to fit in whatever size hole you make. Um, so these six millimeter seem to work really well. They're pretty much kind of a medium size jump ring. And that's pretty much it. Um, most of these supplies, if you make jewelry, you should already have. And so this is really, it's pretty minimalist. It should be pretty fun. Let's do this. Screenshot this if you need to take it to the store with you when you're getting anything that you might be missing. Let's begin. Take your floral wire, cut it various lengths. I don't care what lengths, I'm not even measuring. All you need to know is that you need every two to be the same, so just measure them up against each other and give yourself various different lengths. If you wanna be all mathematical about it, you can sit there and try to measure and get perfect you know, um, differences between the two, but in the end, you'll find it comes down to aesthetics more than math anyway, unless you have conquered the relationship between aesthetics and math, in which case you should probably be teaching a class. But these look big, these look small, these look hopefully medium. Let's see, well first let's make two of each. And you can adjust them as you go, you can, you know, cut them bigger, cut them smaller. Understand once you hammer them, they're gonna stretch out about maybe 10 or 15 percent longer, but that's not gonna make a huge difference. So let's see what we got here. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's nice, that's nice, that's nice. So we got like pretty good graduated lengths there. Let's go for one bigger and one smaller and we're done. There's one bigger right about there. See these very specified calculations I'm using. And let's make two of these. And two baby ones. I'm happy. Are you happy? Did we do this right? Let's find out. Now you want to hammer smoothly and kind of in a pattern and you'll get the hang of it as you do a lot of hammering. So if you feel like you messed one up, don't throw it away just yet. It might be fine. It doesn't have to look perfect. As you hammer it, it might start to bend in different various ways. You want to try to go up one side and back down smoothly and then maybe go for another pass. If you go gentle at first and then get a feel for the hammer and get a feel for how you hit it, slowly you'll be able to get a smoother and smoother look. But in the beginning you might get some weird hammered marks and that just adds to the character. So I'm going to do another pass and make it a little flatter. We want to make these a lot flatter than some of my other videos where the other videos were just hitting it a little bit to strengthen the wire because this strengthens metal hammering it strengthens it especially aluminum a lot but in this case we want to make it quite a bit flatter than normal so we're going to do another pass as you see that's it's getting flatter as we come down.
and I still don't have this pattern down to like perfect machine perfection. So sometimes I'll feel like a certain part needs to be go gone over again. So you might see me coming down and then suddenly I'll back up a little bit or I'll hit a little harder or a little lighter. So like I've been doing this for months now and I still don't have it down. So again, don't try to make it perfect. Don't beat yourself up, just do it. Another thing about doing light taps, you want to be gentle and you want to try not to scratch the color off. The color is going to lighten as it spreads out, but if you hit it too hard or you hit it in a jagged way, you can scratch the color right off and then you see the bare silver colored aluminum underneath. Now if you're working with plain silver aluminum, then that's not really as big of a deal. But in this case, I feel like this one is ready. And so now we're going to take our nail or screw. Pick the side that you want to put the hole on and give this a, even one more set of flattening hits. You want to make that as wide as possible for when you put the hole. And if again, if you want to keep it straight, you might not want it straight. You might want a curved look. You might want a zigzag. But if you do want it totally straight, then it's fine. As it moves a little bit, you can move it back gently with your pliers to get it you know, as straight as, as you like. But again, don't be a perfectionist. So now we're gonna take, in this case, this screw, but I would do a nail if I had it. Put it carefully in as close to the middle as you can. You know, you don't want it too far to one edge or the other. Hold, once you get it right where you want it, hold it tight, hold it straight up, and then give it a good couple hits. See if it went through. See, that wasn't totally in the middle, which is fine. It's quite a bit on the edge, but it's still going to be fine. Maybe. Actually, this one is too, that is too close to the edge for me. I don't like that. So, come on, camera, show, show them what I'm talking about. Can you see it? So, I'm, I'm actually going to do another one. I don't like this. I'm going to turn it over this side, and I'm going to make another hole. And I'm not going to make it too close to the first hole, so I'm not going to worry about whether it now I'm going to look at it from all different directions and make sure it's as close to the middle as I can get it go straight down Let's see if I did better this time um, no I kind of got it on the other side now it's like now I have a hole on both sides uh, come on camera focus so we can see see that see these two holes but it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick the one I like better, and I like this one a little better. It's not perfect, but it's close enough to the middle. So now I'm going to see if I can do this by twisting this to try to open up the hole, because that way you won't need the bead reamer, because bead reamers are not as easy a thing to find. You can find them usually at craft stores, but you can't find them at, like, you know, everywhere. Let's see... Yeah, I think, I think that might be good enough to open up the hole, but in any case, uh, I'm going to use the bead reamer and really twist it, twist it, twist it until it starts to really pop out the other side. And I'm pressing as hard as I can right here, right up against it. Careful not to put my finger over it because I don't want to get stabbed in the finger. If you like being stabbed in the finger, then you, know, you're pr you probably don't have any problem at the doctor's. But I, I think most people prefer not to be stabbed every day in the finger. So I'm coming through both sides, and I'm looking at it. Now, basically, you just test it. You get the jump ring, whatever size jump ring you have, and you open it up, and you see if it fits. It doesn't have to be a super loose fit as long as it gets through and the piece can wiggle. That's all you need. And... You know, as much as it doesn't have to be perfect, you don't want it so close to the edge that you feel like it's going to rip rip out. But generally, earrings, people are, are pretty gentle on their earrings because if you pull really hard, usually the first thing you're going to do is hurt your earlobe before anything else. So it's not like earrings have to be as tough as rings or necklaces, I often say, because they're not going to take as much of a beating. So in any case, um, here you go. So now you got this guy in. Now we're going to take... 
your sandpaper and just get this sharp edge off because we don't want that to scratch somebody's neck or ear as it's dangling around. And just just little bit, little tiny bits of rubs and this kind of go in a circle. You just want to get, um, just get the sharp edge off. Just do it a little bit and then feel. Again, it doesn't have to feel like as smooth as butter, but it, it should feel like if you went like that with it, suddenly it wouldn't give, your, give you a really bad scratch. So once you're happy with that, do the other side too. Usually these sharp ends, we curl up and hide them when we make jewelry, but in this case, we're just making one straight flat piece. So we gotta file them down. And you know, as you do, this is my first one. Um, I did one little test one real quick just to see if the hole worked, but I literally never made these before. So I'm learning with you. And uh, if they're a total disaster, then I'm just gonna throw them at the wall and yell. And uh, you'll just have to witness that part too. Sometimes that can be an enjoyable part of the video, just watching me break down and lose it and start yelling at a wall. There, I, some people, I bet you could have a whole channel just called yelling at walls. I bet somebody's gonna take this idea now and probably build a, a bigger channel just off of yelling at walls. There's all kinds of creative things you could do. You could yell at brick walls. You could yell at wooden fences. You can yell in different languages. You could have a conversation with a wall. Like the possibilities are endless and you know, see that actually feels really nice. It almost feels like soft. So, and you saw that only took a couple seconds. I think really talking about yelling at walls is what really helped me to relax and concentrate on the sanding. So whatever works for you, sometimes these little edges here that popped out from the hole might, might be a little sharp too, just in case you can give them a little bit of a, a little bit of a sanding, but then, you know, make sure when you're done, make sure the hole didn't close up at all. And that's it. You just hammer all your pieces, line them up. You might find your edges are showing a little too much of the silver, like the color came off. And what you can do in that case is try to find a Sharpie that matches and touch it up. And this actually works really well, this particular color for this particular wire. Um, and, you know, varying the, the darkness. And also if you can find little parts where you might have nicked the... Um, the color off or you can just find that you just like how the sharpie looks and when you blend it, it kind of blends actually that's not even blending that's kind of a cool pattern it's a little more exaggerated on the camera it's actually it doesn't show up that much in person it's just a little bit a little bit cool so I'm just gonna go with it this is fun Um, another thing you can try is nail polish. Um, and nail polish, obviously, you're not going to want to rub it with your fingertip. You might want to use a cotton swab or even like a little piece of plastic, like take a little plastic from a Ziploc bag or plastic bag, put it over your finger and just kind of rub like that. So you're not going to get like nail polish all over yourself. That won't come off for a while. But um, it's kind of fun. Okay, I'm finding if you put it on thicker and then rub it really fast, it actually does blend pretty well. So whether you want a pattern or you just want to cover up any um, nicked marks, this is something else you can play with. And it's and if and don't ever think like, oh, I messed it up. Oh, that's not the look I was going for. Just put the whole thing together, and you'll be surprised how. When it all comes together, it's going to look really cool, even if it's not exactly how you were planning for it to be. A bunch of cool things I just discovered in finishing the rest of these. First of all, you don't need to use a, a color Sharpie that matches really well. You don't even need to use one Sharpie. You could use a whole bunch of different Sharpies of different colors. You could totally change the color. You could put, I could throw some blue on here, some turquoise, some pink. You could do three colors and just blend them together. And as you're putting it on and blending it, it's really fun to see the color just streak across. So you can really have fun with this. Another cool thing I noticed is if you hit the nail in hard enough, 
you don't need a bead reamer. Um, if you hit it hard enough, you can open up the hole enough that your jump ring should fit. And, you know, hit it pretty hard, turn around, hit it from the other side. Um, now, that brings me to the third thing I noticed, which is your piece of metal is going to get a little pocked, pockmarked up here. You're going to get some little hole dents in there. So if you, you know, bought a very expensive baby anvil like I did, and you wanted to save this as a family heirloom for generations, you're going to have a little bit of an issue. Now, me, I, I really don't care. I end up destroying half the things I own anyway. So I'll just use this side for when I want stuff to be super flat, except I noticed suddenly I have some pock marks on this side, which I don't even know how they got there. But in any case, um, this baby anvil is really pulling its weight and getting beaten up, but it's, it's making us some pretty stuff. So I'm not worried, but you should be aware of that so nobody writes in and says, you just forced me to damage my baby anvil and I'll never get over this. But yeah, really cool. You technically don't need the bead reamer. Pretty fun. Um, now I haven't used a nail. I know some nails have like a square chisel tipped end if you look real closely. So I don't know, that might give you a square hole. I'm not sure. Um, you know, just try a few things out and have fun. But I'm really having fun with this. I also noticed that as I'm sanding, it's kind of therapeutic. It's kind of fun. Like every part of this is fun. Um, at first it got a little tedious. I said, oh my gosh, I have to like sit here and hammer out every single one of these stupid things. But, you know, the more I got into playing with the color and everything, this is really fun. So now we're going to put these together. The easiest way to do it, if you just want to knock it out and be done, is just to get one jump ring and just put all five of them on the one jump ring. And they'll probably flare out a bit. And then you just put the earring hook on that jump ring and you're done. And, you know, that'll be fun. You could do that. Um, I'm not even going to try that because I had in mind more that I, I wanted them to dangle more. So I'm going to take the first one, put it on, close it up, and then I'm going to take another jump ring, take the next size down, put this jump ring through this jump ring, then put this one on here, close it up. Make sure you close the jump rings really well, like give them a good wiggle and make sure they're, they're so good that that little slit almost disappears because this very thin metal could fall out of the jump ring if you're not careful. So now with these two kind of staggered with the two jump rings, if the camera will focus, the camera will look up here. I'm showing this up here. I'm not showing the ones down on the table. Um, now you get more wiggle and, and dangle and like dancing so they can dance more. And then, you know, just plus it, it uh, if you made them too close in size, this will help spread out the different sizes and, you know, trial and error. But again, put the next one and there we go. Thank you, camera. Finally, put the next one hanging from the last one and go for the next size down. Close it up carefully. And now it's going to get confusing. So you want to make sure. When you're t seeing how to look, you grab it from the very top jump ring that is attached to the biggest one. So then you get a, a good sense of, you know, how they're going to dangle down here. Now see, these these two look almost the same. And this one looks quite a bit bigger, but until you realize that, that they're supposed to go like that. But they're going to dance all over the place and look all different ways, and that's part of the fun. So let's keep going. Each time I put a new one on, I have to grab the tallest one and hold it straight up like that to make sure I'm putting the next smallest one onto the one that's hanging below it. And, oh, you know what? Actually, this is what's what made it kind of confusing. Adding these jump rings is actually making them closer in size than they would have been. I thought it would make them spread out and be more different in size. Okay, well, there there goes my math not doing what it's supposed to. But in any case, I like how these look. And that's all that matters. Put the last one on. And another thing, you don't have to stagger them. You could make one jump ring and then have all the other jump rings of the other pieces just hang from that one jump ring. So it's like a gazillion different ways you can do this. But um, at the very end, you could put a couple more jump rings to lengthen it, or you can just put your earring hook on. And I'm going to put my earring hook on here. 
and we're done. Fun guys, they're very fun. And again, more variations. You could put, I did five here. You could do um, seven. I always like to do odd numbers for some reason. It, I feel like it's, it, it helps with the symmetry um, or the, the elegance or something about it. There's something artistic about odd numbers. But you could do nine, you could do 11, you can, you can do even numbers, you could do whatever you want. Um, they don't have to be straight like this. You could make them zigzag before you hammer them. Um, you don't want to try to make them zigzag afterwards. It's not going to bend very easily. But although you could bend them zigzag this way, you could bend them. But I wouldn't recommend that because that tends to make it weaker. Like if it's just out in space and then every time someone squeezes it or bumps it, it'll change shape. So what you want to do is you want to make them, if you want to make a different shape, make it while it, the wire is still round and soft and then hammer it and that shape will be cemented in. Um, but anyway, anyway, yeah, there's a whole bunch of variations. You could do different colors. You could do like, I, I could have done purple and red here. You could find a whole bunch of different colors and you could, you know, we could have a whole kaleidoscope. So many fun things you can do with this. You guys go have fun and enjoy and make some cool pieces that are going to be party fun earrings for people when they go out and party. Okay, I learned one more thing. This is so exciting. If you take, once you're done, basically it's like a chain if you're doing it you know, the way I said, you basically get a chain from your biggest to your smallest here, right? And then once, if you s hold up the biggest one like this and attach the earring hook to that, then you get what I showed you before where they get, the sizes actually get closer together and they don't look as different from one another. But if you take the smallest one and you hook the earring hook to the smallest one, then you get the opposite effect. They actually become longer and widely, more widely separated from each other in size. So the smallest is higher up and the biggest is lower. And they, so they look way different. So look at the difference here. Like, um, actually not sure if you can see the difference, but this, these, if if you uh, if I hung them up and and, and measured them, uh, yeah, you can see like these these are way more uniform, and these are way more uh, distant from each other, and also they kind of stick out more. They're more spiky. They kind of spread out and kind of you know. So I think I want to switch this one and hang it from the lowest one because I like that look. But this look is cool too. As it is on my fingers, it's kind of like a fan, although it's not going to stay that way once it's jangling all over the place on someone's ear. So, so many possibilities. This is super fun. And these earring hooks are a little bit, these little loops are a little fragile, so you don't want to open and close them too many times because they will break. So if you find yourself opening and closing them three or four times, you might want to make sure it's not too weak. And if it feels weak, just switch to another earring hook because unless you get these in like sterling silver, they're not that expensive. You don't want it falling off someone's ear all of a sudden. That's never fun. Get on there.